Hi there. I am working on a March vintage winter pennant. I'm gluing some lace down here and then I'll trim it off there and there. And I have a piece of ribbon that I'm going to put across the top here for the ties. If they, This is for a swap project if they want to tie it. But what I'm working on today are the tassels. And that's what I wanted to show you. I decided that I was going to make my own tassel out of a strip of approximately two inch. Let me measure this just for the fun of it. Two and a half inch wire or wired ribbon. And I used, actually, I think I got this at either at the thrift or sometimes when I go to Ben Franklin Craft, one of my favorite places to go in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Very nice place to buy all sorts of crafts. <laughs> but uh, they put their leftover bits of ribbon in little dollar baggies. And you can get several different kinds of snips of ribbon. And I really like that. You get them for a dollar. But what I'm doing is, you can see I've started one here. And I wanted to show you how I'm doing this. I, de I decided how much ribbon that I want. And for these, I chose a length of approximately, actually I just cut it in half. It's probably about... Um, About five inches. And I fold it in half. Well, first I, excuse me, at first I cut off the, the little wire and I keep these. So let me cut off this other one. I just take my good old trusty Tim Holtz scissors and trim off the wire. Never fear. We don't need it. I guess you wouldn't have to, but I like to because I'm going to use it use it later on. So I've got four of those. And then I fold it in half. It doesn't matter whether you fold it with the in half with the pattern showing or with the wrong side showing for this part. Then roll the ribbon up from the bottom until you get just about a half of an inch from the top. I try to make my roll just about, an, again, a half inch. But you don't want to go you don't want to go any further than a half inch from the top of your fold. Stop about there. Then take your scissors and you're going to strip this ribbon with your scissors by just simply cutting strips. And you just cut until you've reached the end of the top of your ribbon roll. And then cut another one. You can cut them fat or thin. I like to make mine about a fourth inch. There we go. Now, I want mine to be a mixed media tassel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my ribbon strip like um, like this. I'm just going to roll it from one side to the other. Now there's your tassel. Now you could stop there if you wanted. You have your tassels. And they're kind of, because I rolled them, they're kind of flaring out at the end. You could probably flatten those out or trim them off. Do whatever you want. Um, I'm going to use a clip to hold this. Now, I want mine to be mixed media. I have these little from... got these at Tuesday morning. They're Boyle. They're beaded stitch markers. I think knitters and crocheters use these, probably more knitters than crocheters, to mark their stitches as they're working on them. I take them in. See how that has a little hook on there? Well, I take my little jewelry pliers. I'm really not a beater, but 
or it, you know, I'm not a jewelry maker, but I find these are, I got such a good deal on these and they're the perfect color for my March banners. So I just take my little jewelry plier and straighten this out. This little wire, this little hook. And straighten it out. Not quite straight yet, but I wanted you to see what I was doing. You have to kind of work at it. But I find on these anyway, the wire is strong enough that it'll take the bending and straightening out. Now I just have a straight, and what I used was this paintbrush handle and I just kind of wrapped it around the paintbrush handle to get a sense of so that I wouldn't bend it and squeeze it too tight shut and then I start it by, by my hands I'm wrapping rewrapping that wire around the base the base of this if you can see I'm going to rewrap that wire around the base of this charm here, this little stitch marker. And once I get it started, I can kind of hold it with my hand and don't have to fool with that brush. And a jewelry maker would be able to do this in nothing flat, but of course, you know, I struggle with it. But I eventually get it how I want it. And I kind of try to squeeze that down so that the little wire won't poke anybody if they're handling the tassel. I can do that one more time here. There we go. So now I have a little hook on my... Whoops, it's not completely... Well, I'll work with that as I, as I go. <laughs> But anyway, I have a little circle here so I can hang my bead off of my tassel. Now the other thing I have is just a broken chain, belt chain, that I got. And I took my big heavy duty scissors. I've had these for several years. I cut thin metals and tins and jewelry. And I cut this on one side right Can you see where I cut it? Right there. And then I'm just going to separate it. So I have four and five. Probably wanted, probably wanted more on this one. But that's okay. For the one that I'm going to send, I'll use... Well, let's take this off and put it over here. How is that? There, they're even. Pretty even. Well, this one has... Whoops, I hooked it up again. <laughs> This one has the, this might have been a necklace instead of a belt. I know what it was. I got it with some broken jewelry. I'm going to snip this off. I have glasses, eyeglasses on, but if you don't have eyeglasses or safety goggles when you're doing this stuff, please get them because you don't want that those pieces flying up into your eyes while you're working with them. Okay, that's off. Now I'm going to go back here to the one that I started. See what I have here? I like that. And then I have this. And I also have a little charm. And I want all of these to go... Drop the charm. Hold it a minute. I want all of these go on that tassel but I also want my tassel just a little bit fluffier my tassel is just wrapped here this one out of the way so I I got out a length of ribbon and I'm going to add my ribbon in my tassel here and you could probably do this several ways I just determine how much do I want and then I just I double it several times like this and after I get it all attached I'll go back in and snip those loops let's put it a... 
and I really don't want it to be on the inside. I want it to be on all sides. So as I'm wrapping the tassel, I'll just kind of fit the yarn on the inside of the loop here. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I think you can. And put another loop over this way. This will all be trimmed off. Or you don't really even have to trim it if you like dangly. I tend to like a lot of dangly stuff. Okay. Now I'll go back in and before I do that though, I'm going to take this, one of these wires that I snipped off the wired ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around. See, I got, think I'll leave enough to tie. I'm just going to wrap it around. Maybe I want a little bit more there. You could do this with string too. I'm just using the end of the ribbon, the, the wire part of the ribbon. Let's wrap the larger piece around. And you could also take your stapler or sew. You could do many different things there. I'm just going to wrap this like this. See how you already have your ribbon formed? And you're going to have some strings. That's It's a, going to be a mixed piece. Now before I get this too far along, I'm going to take and attach my... Is this the one that I looped through? I don't think it is. I'm going to attach my dangly. Get it right up to the top. And while I'm holding on to that, I think I'll just give this a twist to kind of hold it in place and wrap it around another time. Now I think I'll twist these together. And you could put your stitch marker on here too. Maybe I will. Thread my stitch marker in there. And maybe I'll put my charm in there. Come on, it's a little bit more stubborn. Come in. Right in there. Now I'm just going to twist these together. Twist them kind of tight. Now, do I feel like this is secure enough? I don't. I'm going to get my big old needles here. I want a thinner, sharper one. And take some, you can use embroidery thread. Maybe I'll use some cotton twine here. This is just dollar store cotton twine. Nothing fancy. Everything here is, is uh, things I got either at the bargain bin or Goodwill, the dollar store, broken jewelry bags. If I can find the start to this. Well, let's give myself a good old length. And I'm going to, I think I'll come through the ribbon from the back first. And just let it dangle. It'll 
will become a part of the tassel. And of course you have your you have your tassels to deal with and everything. You have to kind of hold those tight. But okay, now I want to go through my ribbon with my needle. Just kind of poke it through. I'm just securing the tassels all I'm doing with this. But I still want my I want my danglies to show in the front. And you know what? I could, this is not quite, not quite dry yet, but what I'll do is I'll take this ribbon and I'm going to poke some holes with my crocodile and I'll take this string and attach my ribbon. I'll probably attach it like this and then tie a bow on the front. So that is how I am doing my multimedia. I'm going to let this hang down for now. My multimedia tassel. Let's go ahead and here, let's snip some of these loops. I told you I'd snip them. Oops. Now you can even these off if you want. If you want them all the same length. Maybe I'll, the ribbons, maybe I'll cut them just a teeny bit shorter. But I kind of like them une uneven lengths. And what you have in here is a little charm. I have a stitch marker, a beaded stitch marker, and then I have a little dangly off of that metal broken necklace or belt, whatever it was. And I'll be attaching that down there a sense of how this is going to look. And then I'll have Madame Penelope, Penelope, Rosa a pingle and I'll have a ribbon tie on it like this. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm.